I'm really excited actually about doing this webinar. This is one of my favorite documents to write. A lot of people think the protocols are just very simple, easy documents, but there's a lot that goes into it. And we have a lot to cover today, so I'm going to, well, I'm from the East Coast, so I talk really fast anyway. If I'm talking too fast, just ask me to slow down. If you have any questions, just type them in the chat panel, or, you know, if you want to just yell them out or something, that's fine too. I do answer all the questions in real time, and I do try to save some time at the end as well to answer questions, but we do, like I said, have a lot of material to cover. So I've been writing protocols for over 25 years now. I started in a phase one group, started writing, you know, sort of very short-term study protocols and graduated into writing the big phase three protocols. And as of today, I've written protocols in just about every area. I've done devices, diagnostics, pharma, all phases of development. So hopefully today you'll, you'll have a lot of takeaways. That's my goal. So our objectives for the webinar today are we're going to talk about the structure of the protocol, what the regulatory requirements are versus what you really need to put in as well. We'll talk about all the specific requirements where we talk about the indication, the types of studies, type, types of blinding and bias elimination, about your hypothesis and how important it is and how connected it is to the whole process. We're going to talk a little bit about safety and efficacy and how you establish them in different protocols or, or really how, which protocols are designed to establish them. We'll talk also about the uh, inclusion-exclusion criteria or eligibility for the study, the schedule of uh, events or schedule of assessments, which is a really big piece of the protocol. And we'll talk also about adverse and serious adverse event reporting, which is kind of critical for the safety perspective. One thing that I always like to point out in the beginning is that a protocol is a legal document. People don't always really understand that or the import of a protocol, but it is a legal document that basically is, you know, sort of a guide for everything that has to be done in the study. It outlines everything that has to do with study conduct, and the principal investigator has to sign this, and by signing that, he's basically signing a contract, that he understands what's going on in the protocol and that he or she will have to do exactly what the protocol details. Another thing that's important to understand about a protocol is that it's designed to answer specific research questions, and this is going to be a thread throughout today's webinar. You're really going to have to think about what those questions are, question or questions, I should say, and how everything ties into that. And for every protocol that we write, what is of utmost importance is safeguarding the health of subjects, so we'll talk a little bit about that too. So really, what is the goal of the protocol? We talked just about that briefly about answering a question, right? When we're writing a protocol, though, we have to look at it from a couple different perspectives. We have to think about what we're writing and who we're writing for. If we do our job properly, then what, we're, what, what the takeaway is is that everyone who reads this document is going to have the same understanding. So if you think about how many people are involved, and we're going to talk about all the contributors to the protocol, and there are different levels of perhaps medical knowledge, there are different outlook in terms of what they're doing in terms of the study. Are they, re are they reviewing it from an IRB perspective for safety of subjects? Are they reviewing it from a study conduct perspective at the site? Maybe it's a study nurse who's trying to figure out the best way to organize things. So we have to really think about all the people that are involved and what the takeaway is. So when we write a protocol, we have to keep in mind that we're defining a process for data collection that answers one or more questions. That's, that's sort of the, the protocol in a bullet point. It sounds really simple, right? <laughs> it's not, but it does sound simple. So you really have to know your audience when you're writing a protocol. You have to understand writing, basic, writing basics because being consistent is very important. If we're not consistent, we may make a lot of errors in the protocol or things in different sections of the protocol may have different messages. So one site may collect data in one way, one site may collect data in another way, and before you know it, you have two different kind of studies running and you're not collecting the same data. And it's really hard to analyze data if they're not collected according to the, sort of the process that you've outlined in the protocol. So that's why consistency is really, really important. You also want to understand the regulatory environment. There are certain requirements that have to be met. If they're not met, you might be put on clinical hold until you improve your protocol. So every protocol goes in front of a regulating, regulating body before it's allowed to you know, necessarily go into human subjects. So it's really important to understand what the regulators are looking for. And it's very important to know what goes where. 
what is the flow of a document. Every document has a flow, and if we don't follow that flow in a good sort of linear fashion, it makes it much more difficult to interpret what we need to do.